Today we're looking at resolving forces. So basically, forces can be resolved into a number of smaller components so they can be dealt with in a, in a more easy way. When you have a, when you have a, the first step of this sort of process is to create a coordinate system so that you can resolve them into that coordinate system. In this case, it's probably easiest to have y and x, which are what we usually use. So the first step is to look at all the forces that don't act along an axis, so the 50 and the 200 Newton forces, and to resolve them. So the first step here is to look at the 200 Newton force. So we can resolve that into a force along the x axis and a force along the y axis. Similar with the other force, we can do it in a force on the x axis and a force on the y axis. Once we've done that, we can treat them separately and just solve them for the two components. So for this one, we'll get the x component force is 50 cos 45, and the y component force is 50 sine 45. For the 200 Newton force, we'll get the x force being 200 sine, sorry, cosine 30 degrees, and the y being 200 sine 30 degrees. Those come simply from this triangle, where we have a 30 degree angle, and we know that this is the x, this is the y, so sine is going to be y divided by hypotenuse, and you can rearrange that to get 200 sine 30. So now if we were to find the overall force on this body, it's simply a matter of adding up all these components in the different directions. We'll see that in the y direction, we'll get 100, take 50 sine 45, that's subtract because it acts down, and subtract 200 sine 30 degrees. In the x direction, the 100 doesn't act there, so all we have is negative 50 sine, sorry, cos 45. plus 200 cosine 30. So in order to work out the resultant force, it's simply a force that has this y component and this x component. So it'll act like something like, well it might not even look in this direction, but this is just the example. So we'll have F, Fy and Fx. Thanks.